All right, good morning, everybody. The final 10 countdown continues. Taking a step back towards geometry for the next couple of days. Welcome to lesson 114. We're all about using formulas. So it tells us in the book that formulas often use letters or other symbols to show the relationship between different measurements. Here's some formulas we should already know. We should know the formula to find the area. A equals L times W. A for area equals L for length times W for width. Area equals length times width. We should know the formula for volume. V equals L times W times H. When we want to find the volume, we multiply the length times the width times the height. And in our book right now, they're telling us a formula for perimeter as P equals 2L plus 2W, which means if you want to find the perimeter, go 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. But you also can always just add all the sides still. So the big thing is you always want to think, what formula do you need to solve a specific problem? When you're reading word problems, you want to think, are you looking for a perimeter? Are they asking you to find a volume? Or are they asking you to find an area? So a couple of lessons ago, we ran into trouble on a problem with a rectangular solid where they maybe didn't give you all the information on the sides exactly where you expected it. Maybe they were giving you the measurements at the bottom but they are asking for information about the top, right? One of the properties of rectangular solids, since everything is parallel and perpendicular, these sides are going to be the same. If you have 15 feet for a length along here, you're also going to have 15 feet for a length there. You're also going to have 15 feet for a length along the bottom. You're going to have 15 feet for a length along the back. If you have 12 feet for a width, you're going to also have 12 feet for the opposite width. This top is going to be 12 feet. And this top side is going to be 12 feet as well. So now the first step to solving this problem is we have to figure out how much total crown molding he needed to install. And the formula that we want to use, we just got done saying is P equals 2L plus 2W. Perimeter equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So let's go ahead and start figuring out what is 2 times my length. Well, my length appears to be 15 feet, right? So what is 2 times 15? Hey, that's got to be 30. Then on to the width, plus 2 times the width. Well, the width is 12, right? So 2 times 12 is 24. Last step, I just have to go and combine my terms, right? Add up these numbers. And I have a total perimeter of 54 feet. Now, I know we've been saying about perimeter for the longest time, just add all sides. And if you're still more comfortable doing that, feel free to do it because you're going to end up with the same answer. 15 plus 15 is 30, plus another 12 is 42, plus the final 12 is 54. If you don't want to use 2L, plus 2w, if you're more comfortable just adding all four sides, the answer is going to stay the same. But p equals 54, perimeter equals 54, isn't the answer because they want to know what will be the cost for having the crown molding installed if it costs $7 per foot. So I have 54 feet of crown molding that's going to need to go up. 54 feet for perimeter times $7 per foot to install, and I end up with a grand total installation cost of $378.
Same living room diagram, same dimensions, only now they're saying, Mrs. Jackson wants to buy carpet for the dining room floor. How many square feet of carpet are needed to cover the floor? The key word for a clue here, they want to know square feet, right? So what do we need to do to find square feet? What formula do we want to use? The formula we need is area equals length times width. So you have a width given down here for 12. But what's my length again? Well, my length is given on the top up here in the back, 15 feet. But if this length is 15 feet, I assure you, this length right here is also 15 feet. So I want to go area equals 15 feet for the length times 12 feet for the width. I start off multiplying by the 2 and I ended up with 30. I don't forget to put in my 0 and then I multiply by the 1. I have another 15. Then I add my two numbers together and I end up with a total area of 180 square feet. I multiplied two numbers together, so I need to put a little two for an exponent in the corner. Let's try another one. Here it says, Mr. Jackson wants to install an air conditioner for the room. How many cubic feet of air will he need to cool? And your key word right here, if they want an answer in cubic feet, you should know that you're doing a volume problem. So remember, what's my formula for volume? I have a formula V equals L times W times A. Volume equals length times width times height. So let's go ahead and find out our numbers. With our numbers plugged in to find the volume, I have to take the length of 15 times the width of 12 times the height of 10, right? Well, I want to go and take a little bit of a shortcut because we have already done length times width, right? Our length times our width was 180. So again, our length times our width, we found out when we did the area, was 180, right? So now all we have to do is multiply by the height of 10. So the volume equals 1,800 cubic feet. I multiplied three numbers together. I need a little exponent of three to show cubic feet in the answer. Let's try another one. So the Jacksons also want to cover one 12 foot long wall with wallpaper. How much wallpaper will they need to buy? So this one's a little bit trickier. They want to cover one 12 foot wall with wallpaper. Think about if you're putting wallpaper up right along here. Is this a perimeter problem, an area problem, or a volume problem? Hopefully you know that's area. That is going to say area equals length times width. So 12 times 10 would be 120 square feet of wallpaper. I multiplied two numbers. I have to have an exponent of 2 in my label for square feet. But we're not done yet. Now it's saying the wallpaper Mrs. Jackson likes is on sale for $3 a square foot. How much money will the wallpaper cost? Can we do this one mentally? We need 120 square feet of wallpaper. It's $3 a square foot. So the total cost is going to be $360. Let's go ahead and try another one. The Jackson's son has a trunk in his room to hold his toys. Mrs. Jackson plans to put a liner at the bottom of it. Choose a formula to determine how much fabric she's going to need. She wants to put just some fabric in the bottom of the trunk. Is that going to be an area problem, a perimeter problem, or a volume problem? Hopefully you already know. That, my friends, is an area problem. We want to go with the length times the width. So we're going to start off with the area equals 24 times 12. 
If you went 24 times 12, you will get a grand total of 298 square inches. I multiplied two numbers together. I need an exponent of two in my labeling. Here it says, Mrs. Jackson plans to also put a border around the trunk. Choose a formula to determine the minimum length of border she'll have to buy. If she wants to put a border around all four sides of the trunk, is this a perimeter problem, a volume problem, or an area problem? I'm hoping everybody here already knows. It is a perimeter problem. Perimeter equals two times the length plus two times the width. So let's take a look. Our length right now is 24 inches. So our perimeter is going to equal 2 times 24. Hey, that's 48, right? 48 plus 2 times the width. Looks like our width right here is 12. So 2 times 12, hey, that's got to give us 24, right? So the perimeter is going to give us a grand total of 72 inches. 48 plus 24 equals 72. But if this formula still confuses you for a perimeter, you can still find it by adding all the sides. 24 for the front side plus 24 inches for the back side. 12 inches on the right side and another 12 inches on the left side. If you went and added these all together, it will give you a grand total of 72 inches as well. So you can use the formula. If that's confusing to you, feel free to still add all the sides. All right, last problem here. The diagram is a top view of the Jackson's house showing the outside walls. The outside walls of the house. Like if you were floating on top of it with x-ray vision, you would be able to see inside the house. And the dashes show the outside walls of that new dining room they put in with the crown molding and the new carpeting. Calculate the perimeter of the house. So we have one slight problem before we start trying to calculate the perimeter of the whole house. Yeah, we have a width right now of 35 feet. But do we have the length? The old wall of the outside of the house used to stop here. And then they built in that new dining room that extended their house 18 more feet. So we got one slight bit of work to do here. We better figure out the total length of this wall because we need a length. 18 plus 25, that gives you a new length of 43 feet. So remember the formula they're asking us to use for perimeter. Perimeter equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So let's start off with 2 times the length. We said our new length is 43. 43 times 2 is going to give us 86 for 2 times 43. Plus 2 times the width. We already had a full width here. That's 35. 35 times 2, hey, that's going to give us 70. So our perimeter would be 86 plus 70 for a grand total of 156 feet for the perimeter. And that, my friends, is the end. You are definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper and a pencil for the Socrative quiz today. Good luck.